I'm not really concerned about it. All right, so now let's go through the next example again. Again, we're going to get into some factoring, but now I have um, a little bit more than just one to be factored. Now we have multiple expressions that we're going to want to factor. So the first thing, again, we look at this, we see 3x squared, well, or 3x cubed, which again, I cannot factor. I can't simplify that any further. And then I get to x squared minus 25. Now remember, guys, whenever we have two terms, you're either going to want to be factoring using um, the GCF by factoring out what they have in common, or look for the difference of two squares. Well, I can't factor out anything in common here, but I do notice that this is the difference of two squares. If you guys remember, the difference of two squares is when you have a square term minus another square term, you can factor that to a minus b times a plus b. So if I factor this, I have 3x cubed divided by um, x minus 5 times x plus 5. Does everybody see how I factor that kind of simp yeah. simpler, yeah, simply, that simply that like that? That's cubed. Oh, I know that's cubed. Oh, now that's squared. <laughs> My bad. Now, the next thing is we see up here we have a trinomial. Now, a lot of times I still like to draw the x when I'm doing the trinomial. However, basically, guys, I'm going to try to do as much in my head as possible. When you're doing the trinomial, what I like to do is look for patterns, all right? And when I'm looking for patterns, the patterns that I like to look for is when I'm multiplying to get a positive number and I'm adding to give a positive number, I know both of my factors have to be positive. So I just think of, all right, what were two positive factors that multiply to give me 5 that add to give me 6? Well, that's pretty obvious, right? 5 and 1. So this factor form is x plus 5 times x plus 1. Again, a is equal to 1, so I can just use those as my factors. Then over here, I have x squared. OK? Yes, question? If we are solving a quadratic, then yes, you have to set equal to 0. Right now, we're just factoring. We're just rewriting them. So what we're doing is we're rewriting them as a product. And what's helpful about this is by since we're factoring to rewrite them as a product, I now you guys see that x plus 5 over x plus 5 divides out, right? Yeah. It's the same, same expression. One, over, one in the numerator, one in the denominator. x cubed divided by x squared is going to leave you with? x5. Just x to the first power. Here, right? Well, remember, in the, in the beginning, when you're dividing, you subtract the powers, OK? Um, now, is there anything else I can divide out? No. So therefore, my final answer is going to remain 3x times x plus 1 divided by x minus 5. And then we have to go back to our constraints. Now, notice again, guys, look at the bottom. What can x not equal? Well, if we have a positive 5, this would be 0. Everything would be 0. If we had a negative 5, this would be 0, and then everything would be 0. If we have a 0 here, everything again would be 0. So we'd say x cannot equal negative 5, x cannot equal positive 5, and x cannot equal 0. So I got two more to go, and then I'll be all finished. You're not cross multiplying. What we're doing.